So, unsafe climbing ropes on Amazon? Yeah, there, there's a ton of them. I started this journey back in December 2020. If you're on uh, watching this at a different time, then, well, that's the information for you. One of the things I wanted to do during my winter break was put up zip lines. I was spending some time in Florida, and my family has a property there with lots of great trees, and so I wanted to get some fun setting up zip lines and learning more of that process. In this process of trying to buy ropes for this project, I find out that there is a ton of sketchy, uncertified ropes on Amazon. Most of the top rated ones, most of the top sellers are all untested, uh, uncertified ropes that are marketed for climbing purposes, and that's just unsafe. It's not particularly surprising. Amazon is a commercial company, and they're not motivated to moderate their actual stuff, so this is more just consumer information than anything else. But I just wanted to get the message out there and see what I could do. This is going to be a pretty informal video. Uh, I have some stuff queued up on OBS, a little note thing that I've got next to the camera. I'll go through what I found, how products appear on Amazon, how to search the UIAA database for products that are certified, both in terms of that they actually carry the certification that they say they carry, and products that are listed as dangerous or listed as label misuse. I'll go through, and then finally I'm going to go through how to check how to order real ropes, because a lot of times you have to order stuff online. Supporting local shops is great, and that's something that you should always try to do, because experts in your area and people to talk to in the community around is how you stay in hobbies. But sometimes you can't do that, and you just have to order stuff online. So I'll give some recommendations on how to do that. So this is what I was doing. Uh, the longest rope that I set up was a 200-foot-long ro rope and just setting up zip lines, having fun as much as I could. A consistent problem that I ran into was ordering the equipment off Amazon. It was always sketchy. So it started out with, let's go to browser view. It started out with this X-Bin rope, which if it comes up, this X-Bin sponsored, it's a sponsored rope, so Amazon is being paid to bring it up to the top of search results. And it is the best seller on Amazon. I've just switched to the black color here. It's, it's not actually that much different. This rope is being sold as static climbing rope, escape ice rock rope. It's being sold as rope that should be human rated, but it's, it's very much not. It will hold a human's weight, but it doesn't go through the testing and safety steps that real safety rated ropes have to. I tested it and went through it, and I ended up using it primarily as, uh, like, hoist rope. You can evaluate how safe you want to do that. But anyway, uh, a recording that I recorded in Florida of a breakdown of this rope, so you can see what it actually looks like. This is a review of a Chinese climbing rope that I got off Amazon recently. Um, it's quite obviously not something that you want to climb with, and it doesn't carry a UIAA certification, so that makes sense. Uh, one of the first non-discrepancies, you can see uh, there's 14 strands. Each strand is made up of three primary subweaves. Main issue there, they said it was a 13-stranded rope, but th that's not that big of a deal. The main thing that's primarily obvious, so this orange cord is a real static repelling rope, and it's 10.5 millimeters, so you can see that the other cord is probably only 8 millimeters at most. It does support full human weight, but I would not say that it is safe to operate in a climbing environment. These are the carabiners that you get with it. They do work, they do have a locking bit to them, but they carry no certification, no documentation, nothing of any kind, and this screw dial that's on here is pretty this is a review of a Chinese certification no documentation nothing of any kind and this screw dial that's on here is pretty sketchy it is sticks consistently and is not very fun to deal with and then you can see that that rivet right there looks like it was beat in with a hammer not a quality product at all Looking in the weaving and the eyelet, eyelet does look pretty good. 
and the weaving stitching goes there's a sub stitch that's in the just the outer jacket and then a main stitch that looks like it goes all the way through about half of the core so that's pretty good this is what it looks like out of the package I got the 230 foot version and uh, next up we'll be doing a fall test so in addition to that we also set up a little rig where I did a cut test of the rope so I'll cue that up next Chinese Amazon rope. Uh, I got my sister here, and we're going to cut through it slowly and see how it breaks. We might want the cameraman to pull in a little bit so we can get a close up shot of the brake section here and there. But uh, other than that, yeah, I think we're good to test. Okay, go for it. Yeah, just try and cut the casing off a little bit. Back side over this side needs a little bit on the casing. All right, casing is. Hey, hey, there we go. There we go. Core. This is a 14 strand core. Each of the cores has three braids on it. Yeah, it looks like I already cut quite a few. Okay, well, that's fine. At least four or five. We just want to know how many. So can I, uh, oh, my sender is ripping the casing. Yeah, so it'll still support you on two and a half. It will. Okay, cool. That's what I wanted to know. <clears throat> That's okay. So that cut test is kind of interesting. Um, it shows that the rope could pretty reliably support my weight on just two strands remaining. So estimating that I exert probably a little bit less than a kilonewton of force, and it's 14 strand rope, so it, it could probably do reasonably well seven kilonewtons of force. Uh, that's why I was okay using it as a hoist rope, but it's not real climbing rope. The sheath is very thin, it's not very wear resistant, and it's just pretty dangerous to use in general for the purpose that it's advertised. But that, that doesn't where the problem stop on Amazon. It's not just that ropes that are uncertified and untested are being sold as, are being marketed as climbing rope, but there's actually quite a bit of mislabeling in the ropes that are actually labeled as UIA certified or ropes that you should be able to use. Um, so we're going to go to, so when you go look at Amazon, let's switch to browser view. So static climbing rope. So as you're going through here, most of the ones that you see are not UIAA certified. They're just this small rope that's a lot thinner than it really should be. Eight millimeters can hold your weight, but it's not great. And then there's a few ones that are like this powerful UIAA static rope climbing rope. And I've actually got some of that here i've got the the black version the orange version is the one that i was showing alongside before uh it's so first off it's marketed as 10.5 millimeter rope but let's go to there it's marketed as 10.5 millimeter rope it, it is the 10.5 millimeter rope it's not fantastic so let's go like it kind of depends on where you test it and how you test it it's anywhere from 11 and I've measured it in some spots where it's slightly below below 10.5 millimeters so like it's not terrible uh, the main problem that I had with this rope is just the sheath slips a fair amount so if I just do like 
I've already taken about a foot and a half of sheath off this rope. You can see here in just a second that the end is modified. But the other problem, so if you're rappelling down this rope with a prussic on it, you consistently end up with too much sheath below where you're operating. That's not tremendously unsafe. Uh, a loose sheath isn't a big deal, but it can lead to wear issues. And the sheath on this rope is already pretty cheap and thin. So eh, it, it's not that great. But it, it, it gets worse in that terms. Let me see. So when we go to, it's fine. So this is the rope spot rope. Back to browser view. This is the rope spot rope. When we dig down into it, looking for a certification number for UIAA. So it says UIAA certificate number 174707. That is a certification number, and I can search it and find it. It is labeled, yeah, here it is CHN 17047. Just found this on Google. Um, the actual safety label search, you can go to here. Let's just show you how to do this real quick. Uh, typical, as soon as I try to record stuff, it doesn't work. Um, anyway, going to the actual certification, CHN 1747, it is a valid certification, it does exist, but there's no way to know that the company didn't just find the certification and copy it, so that's a little sketchy there. The interesting thing, though, so there's other ropes on Amazon. This one is... So they're debating the certification number of it. This is marketed as an 11 millimeter rope. And if you search down through here, eventually you get a reply from the seller that says that the product number is this 02110301105. And if you find that's the same certification number as the rope spot rope, but the rope spot rope is 10.5 millimeters marketed and the mud frog rope is 11 millimeters marketed and they both reference the same 10.5 millimeter UIAA certification. Now it gets a little bit worse in, in that because when you get into, so this is the misuse search page. So this is where you're supposed to actually go to search to see if things are being reported as false advertising essentially. And on this web page, you can see RopeSpot, Crag Pro. Crag Pro is another one of the common ones that pops up. Here's one right here. It's certified. It's, uh, it's claims that it's certified, but it shows up on the UIAA mislabel, mislabeling site. And you can search through all of these. Pretty much all of the cheap ones are bad. They're, they're not certified correctly. And a lot of them show up on these reports. And go, let's go to the next one. And then, yeah, nylon current mantle mud fog right there. So the main brands that are on Amazon are all being consistently reported as unsafe to use or mislabeled. A mislabeled rope, that's not too big of a deal. What it seems like is happening is, let me see if I can find, what it seems like is happening is this Chinese manufacturer is manufacturing ropes in bulk and then smaller companies are rebranding them and selling them onwards as different versions of it. And it does look like this Chinese manufacturer does actually have a UIAA certification, but that's just not how the certification works. The certification is supposed to be responsible of the primary brand holder such that they're responsible for the quality control of the rope. So this handing off of quality control from a back-end Chinese manufacturer to the brand that you're purchasing it, it's a little sketchy. That being said, the, the ropes that I've gotten from RopeSpot, their only main problem is their sheath slips a little bit more, and they've got more sheath than they should. So I just had to ring them down the line and then cut off about a foot and a half of sheath off the end of a 96-foot rope, which, yeah, that's a little concerning. Um, it's also their particularly thin sheath, so I'm not completely confident about 
the wear life of them. Let me see. Now, if you want to find a real static certified rope, uh, let's just see how far down this page we, we have to scroll before we get to one. So we're climbing rope, static is what I've searched. Uh, I'm in an in, uh, incognito window, so it, it's not using any of my previous stuff that I've given them. Going down, we're about a quarter down the page. Like I said, so this is where this mud fog one shows up, but the mud fog one shows up on the UIAA misuse place, and it has problems with the way that the certification works, so I'm not counting that as a valid one. Still going down. How far do we have to get down? Ah, black diamond. So about halfway down the product result page on Amazon is when you start to first see real climbing ropes that you can actually be confident are certified fully. That's ridiculous. If you're searching climbing rope static, most of those results should not be just the popular ones that stupid people have decided are cheap enough to order. You should be getting ropes that you can count are safe to use for climbing or for rappelling or for whatever you're doing. So let me see. The conclusion here, uh, I don't expect anything to change from this. Amazon isn't motivated to make any changes on this. And their product recommendation algorithm is based on what people buy, and people buy cheap shit. So that's what's going to happen. But basically, if you want real rope, you should probably try and buy it from a local climbing store, but I know that that's not realistic most of the time, and a lot of people want to order stuff online. So in that case, just go directly to the manufacturer. Uh, sometimes that's not realistic. People who live remote, they use prime shipping to get things out to them in situations where the shipping would otherwise be prohibitively expensive. So I did find that... Blue Water Ropes appears to be selling a fair amount of their stuff legitimately through Amazon as prime distribution. Um, this is one of the ropes that I got, and I've actually used this as a main zipline rope. And the rope that I received, it appeared to be up to spec, and it had all the correct documentation with it. And I did receive it prime, which was great. Now, that being said, one problem that Amazon can happen, can have is... Uh, grouped skew distribution. So that's basically if a bunch of different manufacturers say that they're selling the same skew of product, in Amazon's distribution chain, it will ship products that are of the same skew, even if it's came from a different supplier or came from a different distributor, just to enhance logistics, essentially. The problem that occurs there is then, so if another seller was to post on this blue water rope selling and put up a counterfeit rope that isn't actually certified, then you could potentially order this rope from what you think is a reputable seller from a reputable brand with all the certifications that you want to have. But then in the distribution chain, Amazon ends up sending you a counterfeit product because some other supplier has supplied them with a counterfeit product. So it's kind of sketchy. You always got to check your gear when you receive it. But hopefully you can pull some information from this. Uh, review of these sites that are useful. This UIAA certified equipment page, uh, you can search it by brand and check to see if the certifications are actually in the UIAA database. And then this misuse page, um, essentially... When you go to the first part of it, you can pull up a search thing and it'll give you the all the misuse and dangerous products for a given year. Uh, I'm hoping guys can use this information. Anyway, uh, happy evening.